Eager to be on the stage, we would like to introduce our student keynote speaker this evening, Sam Sassy. Sam is in her final semester of college here at UW Oshkosh. She is majoring in radio, TV, and film, and you can see her work Sunday, May 14th at the Time Community Theater in Oshkosh. She is a member of Gamma Phi Beta Sorority and works as an assistant in fraternity and sorority life office. She also holds many additional positions across the campus. She is excited to leave a legacy on the UW Oshkosh community tonight as she wishes to help students feel better, love better, and grow better. So please assist us in welcoming Sam to the stage. Can everybody hear me okay? Microphone working? Okay, great. So, feel better, love better, grow better. Um, it's been my dream to actually be up here. I first went to the last lecture um, in spring of 2019. It was the first one that I went to um, in Greek life. It was the one with Dr. Lawrence Perlin and with Haley Lawrence, who is one of my Gamma Phi sisters. And they made a huge impact on me. I, from there, wanted to also make a huge impact, hopefully. Let's, let's all go as well. We're gonna make an impact tonight, I hope. Um, and so through that, I wanted to hopefully um, tell you all a fun story. Um, as was mentioned, I'm a radio TV film major. And so storytelling is kind of what I want to do with my life. So I am going to go through this journey of feeling better, loving better, growing better in my personal experience through story time. So. For feeling better, um, I just want to make a little disclaimer. I'm going to talk about physical and mental health. Um, physical health conversation um, is around heart disease and cancer, and mental health is around depression, anxiety, OCD, and disordered eating. So just a little disclaimer. Um, just want to put that out there because I know those topics can be a little triggering. So to start this talk, um, the main, the first main character of the story is my grandpa Foster. Um, these are a couple pictures of us. He is my mom's father, um, and I am his only grandchild. Um, my mom's an only child, and so am I. So I would say that I am my grandparents' pride and joy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the story starts with him. Uh, it's really interesting. We think that, um, my whole family thinks that out of all my grandparents, I most resemble him. We both have hazel eyes. We both can do like a weird little trick with our toes. Um, <laughs> Not gonna show you. Don't repeat this. Um, but we also have similar personalities and similar genetics, obviously are related. But unfortunately, some of those genetics um, have to do with high cholesterol and heart disease. So we're going to go through a little history of my grandpa's uh, health journey. This is a good picture of him. Um, in 1986, he was diagnosed with heart disease at 38 years old. That is fairly young for a heart disease diagnosis. Um, and unfortunately, it runs in the family. He, when he found out his diagnosis, he took a lot of um, time and energy into doing the right things he needed to do to stay healthy, which included um, medication, exercise, eating well, and all that. Hey, are you watching? Uh, unfortunately, Chris? still. In 2008, are you watching Samantha? Um, let him know that. His oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, I am. I was just, <laughs> and in order to yeah, have a major heart attack, <laughs> he had to have okay, a possible good. Okay. bypass. Okay, bye. Um, bye. This okay. was scary. I remember coming home from school one day, and my mom was sitting at the kitchen table booking a flight. Um, she explained to me what was going on. Uh, 
by the way, they live in Texas, so I had to fly there. Um, and she explained to me what was going on, and I was really scared. It was a scary thing, for sure. Um, but luckily, it all went well. The surgery went well, and he was healthy for many years after that. And then in 2015, after a uh, routine colonoscopy, he found out that he had ampullary cancer. It is a rare cancer, about only 1% of the population um, ever has this type of cancer, and they treat it like pancreatic cancer, the closest thing um, to it. So a month later, he had Whipple surgery. If anyone's a nursing major or anything like that, maybe you know what that is. But basically, it's where they remove the head of the pancreas, the first part of the small intestine, the gallbladder, and the bile duct. So it's a really extensive, complex surgery. And after he was recovering, then he went through multiple rounds of chemotherapy and radiation. Um, and... Lo and behold, like about a year later, they deemed him to be cancer free, which is fantastic. And he has been since then. Um, he has six month scans um, until 2025. So that's two years after the fact that he has to um, make sure that things are still okay. Um, but yeah, he has obviously been through quite a lot. Um, why am I telling you all of this? Why am I telling you my grandpa's medical history? I don't know. Um, no, really, it's because I have learned a lot from him. I've learned a lot about how to take care of myself. Um, and because this runs in the family, my mom also has high cholesterol. She found out that out when she was a teenager. And within the last year, I also found out that I have those genes. I also have high cholesterol. So high, in fact, that the doctors actually told me that if I did nothing about it, I would have the possibility to develop heart disease in the next 10 to 15 years. That would mean I'd be diagnosed with heart disease at 32. That is so young. Um, so luckily, I got on medication. I started making sure that I was doing everything I needed to do to combat that. And the next blood test I had, they said everything was perfect. So hopefully that continues. But what I learned from this is you have to take care of yourself. Like you cannot just let yourself be sometimes. Um, so this is the physical part. Um, and then I wanna talk about mental health as well. So main character in this part of the story is me. I have to be the main character at some point in the story. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> and my, so the picture on the right here is of me and my dad, um, when I was 13, this was around the time that I started to develop mental health issues. I started seeing a therapist and they told me I had dystymia, which has recently been renamed as, um, Persistent depressive disorder, which is a mild but long term form of depression. Um, I was able to combat this in therapy by uh, focusing on gratitude. Um, I made a little gratitude jar, I painted it and everything, and like a whole art project, and put little slips of paper in there that things, there were things that I was grateful for, things that I knew in my life that. I should look at and be like, wow, I have new things. What is there to be sad about? Obviously, that's not always how depression works, but it did help a lot for a lot of instances. And it's something that I still look back to today. In the picture on the left here was me in the fall of 2019. 2020, sorry. Um, during this time, I was not doing so hot. Um, I started developing some really bad issues with anxiety. I, I always kind of had anxiety, but it was getting to the point where I needed to figure something else out. Um, 
I was dealing with uh, emetophobia, which is the fear of throwing up or seeing other people throw up. Um, and so this caused me to have um, really huge tendencies. I was so scared about eating certain things that like just because I ate one thing, it would make me sick. And so I was so afraid of getting sick to my stomach. Stomach. And of course, like my diet symptoms were me getting sick to my stomach. Um, so it was just like and a really, 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 really vicious cycle. Um, it got to the point where I was having multiple panic attacks a week. You guys have ever had a panic attack? You know that that is not fun. It, you know, feels like you're basically dying. It's the best way I can describe it. Um, and so I realized I needed help. Um, a lot of other people in my life decided that they wanted to intervene and make sure that I was getting help. So we decided I need to go on medication. And for some of you, I know a lot of people in this room probably take medication for mental health um, things. But at that point, I thought I could handle it. I was like, nah, I don't need, I don't need to be medicated. I'm never going to be one of those people. Um, but that didn't work out for me, obviously. I was struggling. So I started taking Lexapro. And after a month of taking Lexapro, it felt like I could finally breathe. Like I could take a deep breath and let it all out and just be okay. So Lexapro changed my life. Medication was great. Um, <laughs> and uh, oh my God. So close. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, sorry. Technical difficulties. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to take him for a walk. So I started taking Lexapro, and then I saw a new therapist, um, and that had nothing to do with anything else. I just started seeing a new therapist, and she opened my eyes to some things. I was feeling better at the time, but when I talked to her, she was like, oh, I'm going to diagnose you with um, generalized anxiety disorder. No, I'm like, doctor, I already knew that. Um, but the other thing she said to me was, did you know that, or has anybody ever told you that with OCD? And I was like, no, there's no way I have OCD. That's impossible. You see my room? You, if you saw my room, I would debunk that like real fast. Um, it's messy. But <laughs> that was the problem. That's what I thought OCD was. I thought that it was, you know, just this thing that you needed to be clean and tidy and not make a mess. And she explained to me that that's not at all what it is. And the best way I can explain it using my own stories is that um, when I was 10 years old and my grandma, who's watching on the live stream right now, will remember this, um, I used to be very meticulous about where I would put my stuff in while I'm in the next book. It had to be in a very specific order. And for, oh, sorry, for no reason at all, if they were out of order, I would feel so just terrified oh, for no reason. Like I just, it felt like the world was ending because they were out of order. Makes no sense. Eventually I grew out of that. Um, and the way that it manifested recently is in the food thing that I just talked about. I wanted to control a food. If I wasn't eating my safe foods, I felt like something bad was going to happen. And when she said that to me, she was like, I think you have OCD. I was like, I think so. No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to um, say that I think that it's OK. You know, it's OK to have these issues. Um, it's okay to struggle, it's okay to go to therapy, it's okay, it's okay to be on medication, and there's always a brighter side um, to the story. There's always going to find, you're always going to find a way through the tunnel, through the struggle, and come out on top as long as you take care of yourself. So, now we're going to talk about loving better. 
Um, I couldn't start loving better until I started feeling better, which is why one leads to the other. Um, when I was going through my really rough patch, my comfort, my main comfort was in stuffed animals. Um, and for those of you who know me really well, know that I'm obsessed with stuffed animals and I love them very much. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry. And I actually have one with, here with me today. She's the third main character of my story. <laughs> this is Lammy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so Lammy has been a really big part of my life for a long time. Um, this, this section uh, has to do with kindness and empathy, and it also has to do with my uh, grandpa Foster again, actually. The story of how I got Lammy was this really, really nice woman that worked with my grandfather took it upon herself to go and buy a stuffed animal because she heard that he was having a grandchild. Um, this woman never knew me. I've never met her. I truly don't even know what her name is, um, unfortunately. But her like small act of kindness really had such a profound impact on my life. So uh, there's my grandpa Foster, the Flammy. Um, there's another picture of me and I have like a million pictures. But I truly I just want to reiterate, I love this thing so much. I mean you can tell. Like if I go back, that's what it used to look like. <laughs> and now this is what it looks like. Um but I I don't care. What you guys think? You might think I'm crazy, but I would run into a burning building to save this thing. I cannot imagine living my life without it. My child. So anyway, I have a few more photos just for fun bees. Um, because we did a lot of research um, with my family trying to find. A bunch of pictures. So there's me and my dad and Lammy and Plenty Now. As you can see here, there are two Lammies. My parents were so concerned about um, me losing this one or something happening to this one that they actually got me two more. So those two, uh, this is Lammy one, and then there's Lammy two, and there's Lammy three. <laughs> and those two are at home back at my parents' house, which obviously is so thankfully nothing bad happened to this one. Here another couple of goofy pictures. Um, this one here specifically, I really wanted somebody to play with no way. I'm an only child. This man was all I had. <laughs> so my mom had the great idea to put him in a little Tupperware so that I could bring him outside with me. So that's right, like I said. And uh, here's a couple more. Um, I like it. I have a lot of stuffed animals, but there's me on the stairs with a uh, ton of them. And then here's another little one by a Christmas tree. Um, um, so here's the last slide of me and Lamy photos. Um, as you can see, this was my senior year of prom. Um, he's been through a lot in my life. Um, he's been my greatest comfort in my darkest moments, but also has been there through all of my joys and my triumphs. And if it wasn't for this woman who worked with my grandfather, I wouldn't have that. So it just goes to show that these small acts of kindness can really have a huge impact on someone's life. So the next part of this, um, which I'm contributing to her, the one who got me Lammy, um, is that I started 
bringing stuffed animals with me to school. The text in the middle of the video says, I used to have nightmares, like legitimately like recurring nightmares about bringing, accidentally bringing my stuffed animals to school. And when I was going through that really rough patch, I was like, these things bring me so much comfort. Like, why can't I just bring them with me along with my day? And then I realized, yeah, I can't. Actually, I can. So I started doing that. Um, and it started spreading joys in other areas. Um, I was bringing, <laughs> I was bringing different stuffed animals every single day to the Greek Life Office. Um, as you can see, there's some videos of some of my um, friends and council, uh, co council members. And I just really realized that it was bringing other people joy. It was uplifting them on their bad days. And that's why I continued to do it. Um, I didn't necessarily need it for myself anymore. I was feeling okay. But other people really, really enjoyed it. And I just love that. I love spreading the kindness and the happiness. Um, <laughs> so in January, I was working full time and I didn't see a lot of people and I was still bringing stuffed animals with me to work. Um, so I started on my Snapchat story, uh, Stuffy of the Day, S-O-T-E. Um, and that, you know, was one of the things that I have spread to other people. And actually, I haven't taken my photo yet. So you guys want to be in my picture? We're just going to do a little... Thank you so much. <laughs> so the whole point of this is that bringing kindness um, into other areas, things that make you feel good, spreading those things to others, can have like a real impact on other people. Um, I'm like a true supporter of random acts of kindness. There's so many things that you can do that just make people happy and um, spread the love. Here's a list of ideas. And I think that we all can spread kindness in whatever way feels right to you. So the final part, um, the final part is about growth. Um, and the main character for this part, um, even though I am gonna tell a little story about myself, but the main character is really all of you because you can also learn how to grow better. Um, the decisions that you made to get here tonight, whether that be just the, the decision to go to college, the decision to um, join a fraternity and sorority, because I know 70% of you had to be here tonight, um, <laughs> or just the decision to move away from home and to support yourself. You may think that those were no-brainers, like those are just things you had to do, but those are hard decisions. You don't have to do those things. They're tough decisions. And so I truly think that you need to do hard things in order to grow. Um, and especially finding your passion. Uh, so as we have all established, I'm a radio TV film major, but I wasn't always. I was actually a computer science major when I first started here. Um, I decided to change my major because I was just unhappy, uninspired, I was really stressed out, and I just wasn't having a good time. And I decided to change my major um, second semester of my junior year, so like, not great timing, but I just really felt like it was something I had to do. Um, and I had to make that hard decision about, do I really want to change my major and go to school for more than my four years that I had planned? Um, it was something I was afraid to tell my family about. And then they asked me more hard questions, like, well, computer science is so safe, you make so much money, or are you sure you would ever get a job in radio, TV, film? Which are valid questions, <laughs> but still, nevertheless, I persisted um, and decided to change my major. 
And through that, I rediscovered my passion. A lot of you know that I'm a photographer. I've been doing a 365 photo challenge. Um, and changing my major really helped me rediscover that passion for photography, for videography. Um, going through our research for photos, we found some videos that I made as a kid. I'd steal my parents' camera and make little videos of myself. There was one that was like the Sandy K show um, and just like a whole bunch of other random little things. And so that just like re like validated my decision that I've always been wanting to do this. This has always been something, a creative part of me that I've always been doing. Um, on the left here is me um, assistant directing a Titan TV show. And then on the right here is um, my filming group uh, that was mentioned at the beginning. Well, plug, thank you for, I think Angie probably wrote that. Um, for my short film that's screening on May 14th. Um, from watch. But <laughs> I've just really found my niche there. So it's been great. Um, so the point of all this is that making hard decisions equals growth. Um, standing up here is not easy. I feel better now than when I first started. I'm like a little more comfortable, but it's still hard. Um, I'm pouring my heart about, about things that are really personal to me and that I'm really passionate about. Um, and that feels good, actually. And I think that we owe it to the people who built us up in our lives to find our passion and to grow um, for them because they think that they know that we can do it. Um, sorry, last time, I hope. Um, so the reason why I wanted to say that you all are the main characters here is because you can do this too. I mean, great Tom Hanks quote here. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. It's the hard that makes it great. And so I think you all can absolutely feel better, love better, and grow better. And I know that you all can do it, and I'm rooting for you. Thank you.